previously at prevailing word ministries well, in long that. enough in the presence of god god would have fixed the trauma that had affected him that stopped him from walking into the fullness of what god had prepared for him read the story i don't have time to keep reading all these stories i'll just th i'm just throwing them at you my five minutes has turned out to be 40 minutes of a backdrop still haven't gotten into the notes so what is it that you want from god what do you need god to do for you do you need a word do you need some instruction do you need some wisdom do you need a breakthrough are you willing to pay the price to get the thing that you need from god 95 percent of your modern day pentecostals are not willing hence the lethargic attitude towards the things of god Whoa. So it says, because he shall train up his children, there are certain things that I cannot hide from him because they cannot remain in the jurisdiction of God. They've got to move into the jurisdiction of man. A steward on earth that is going to manage, supervise, manipulate, control, administer. What can God trust you with? Now let's move. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. Then after this we, we can move to the notes. He says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands for God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind what made Timothy a great leader a great pastor he was the pastor of the mega church in the, in the region of Asia Minor big churches big influence what made him that number one he says i see that there's faith in you but that faith is the same faith that i see in your grandmother so your grandmother established what what happened where were the fathers nature hates a vacuum when a vacuum is created it'll be filled by something else now we have a whole generation that is being raised by grandmothers and, and grand and mothers because fathers are not present. Fathers are supposed to be the source of spiritual DNA. Spirituality. You know, I was, I was standing here and I was saying, as I looked at my precious, precious kids, I can tell by looking at these kids what happens in these homes. The greatest reflection of who you are is not how good you look out there. It's when I look at your offspring. Either because you're not doing a good job in raising them or you've abdicated your role to somebody else. Hey, 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 hey. the faith was in your in your grandmother and then in your mother why did the grandfather not have faith why did the father not have faith if you actually read i think it's in the book of acts we see a little bit more of the detail how paul came and adopted timothy and now there was this conversation of him being half Greek and not being a circumcised Jew. And Paul took him and he circumcised him so that he could be acceptable amongst the Jewish community. So Paul took on the role of mentoring Timothy in order for Timothy to function in his assignment. And then he 
he makes the statement that we've just read because of the transition from the environment that you were under in the jurisdiction of your father and your family and then you moved under my jurisdiction there is something that is in you and you are to focus on that thing How did that thing get into him? He says it is in you through prophecy and the putting on of my hands on you. In other words, laying on of hands is not an empty spiritual ritual. It is a process by which the genetic coding in a person is rewritten, restructured for what the kingdom wanted to establish. So a David is raised up by a Jesse who had issues with prostitutes. So out of a fling with a prostitute, the prostitute got pregnant and David was the offspring. If you read your scripture, it will tell you that I was altogether conceived in iniquity. That is why when they said bring your sons they brought everybody else except david because he was a bastard he was not in the family meeting when the oil refused to flow they said are these your only sons or he says oh is this bastard out there we send him to look after the sheep while the other sons of my wife have better privileges says bring him we will not sit until he comes when david comes the oil flowed on a bastard and he sets him up to be the next king when the oil flows there's a necessity for the change of fathers because Jesse, his father, couldn't recognize the greatness that was hidden in him. It took a prophetic voice from Samuel to recognize and identify that this one is not a bastard. He's a king. A soul was recognized by a spiritual father and that changed his destiny. His stubbornness and his PTSD kept him in his old identity and he lost the anointing in two years. David functions as a king but his PTSD, his soul that was not fixed, the childhood traumas of his bastard period were not confronted were not dealt with what was the byproduct of david's dysfunction he had a proclivity for skirts commits adultery gets somebody else's wife pregnant has to commit murder the iniquity runs right through the family. The son of Bathsheba, the first one, died. Then God says, okay, I'm going to comfort you. There shall be a shalom man who shall come out of Bathsheba. Shalom man is Solomon. So the second son is the one that became the redemption. But the dysfunction continued. Whatever dysfunction you have as a father that you don't deal with, guaranteed it is written in the genetic coding of your children. Until you create the right environment within your home. So what happened? Amnon, David's son, rapes Tamar, his half-sister. Now there's a mess in the family. Absalom hears that Amnon has raped his sister and it's a whole horrendous story I mean read the detail of it it's in the Bible for a reason he falls in love with his half sister and he says I want to have sex with her and he's, and he's sad he's literally sick and depressed because he wants to have sex with his sister 
his advisor, his friend comes and says, why is the king's son so troubled? Let me give you a strategy. Go into bed, pretend like you're sick and request from the king that Tamar will bring food for you. Young ladies, don't ever go and bring anything into a boy's flat. When you're invited into a boy's flat, that boy only has one thing on his mind. Parents, fathers, protect your daughters. You don't like me today. Thank you. One amen, two amen, three amens. Sexual dysfunction is the biggest propagator of disorder, trauma, and chaos in families. I've said this before, let me say it again. This is the most sexually abused generation of all time. And if I can tell you now, all of your children have been sexually abused all of them all of them here I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I can tell you now every single one of them if we were to honestly ask them how many of you have seen porn have watched a movie that is inappropriate scenes what do you call that that is sexual abuse who is propagating it the spirit in the region What happens to a human mind when it is, is, it is exposed to pornography? No, they're just acting. Yeah, I know. They're just acting. But what is happening to the human mind in response to porn? So now we have this. This is what they, happened to David's family. Absalom gets upset and what does he do? He does what his father did. You kill the man who raped your sister. Murder is breaking out. Rape and sexual disorder is breaking out. What did Absalom do? Absalom became so full of himself and pride. The Bible says he was handsome, the most handsome man in the, in the nation. He had the longest hair. The Bible says they were making hair pieces from his hair every time he went to the barber. Read it, it's in your Bible. That's how handsome he was. That's how full his hair was. Pride, arrogance came in. And then he said, he started speaking at the city gates. Come and see me, my father is busy. Because pride causes a break in the focus from the father to the son. Before the father confers the greatness of the son. Oh, you don't want me. What was the next step in Absalom's case? He wanted to overthrow his father. When you raise up sons that are bastards, they will want to overthrow you. What was the highest expression of Absalom's rebellion? He kicked his father out of the city. He takes and assumes the role as the king. Then he gets an advisor the voice of advisors. He says to make sure that the city and the nation sees that you have become an abomination to David. Put a tent on top of the palace. The same place where David had watched porn. <laughs> when Bathsheba was bathing, David was on top of the palace watching Bathsheba take a bath. And now his son puts a tent in exactly the same place. And what was the tent for? He says, begin to sleep with all your father's concubines. As a national statement that you have taken over. So every evening in the public eye, the people could see him going in with a different woman every night. To have sex with her overnight and making a... Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So he says, there's a gift in you. 
and that gift was put in there by the laying on of my hands so the two key questions that I want to ask you as we move to the notes for a few minutes check how much time we have what patterns were established in your life as you were growing up what patterns were established in your life as you were growing up and for you the question may be slightly different here's your question what patterns are being established in my mind right now lazy fathers establish a pattern and a blueprint in the child's mind that laziness is normal you establish systemic laziness a father who cheats establishes a pattern in their family that cheating is normal a father who lies establishes a pattern of lying a father who beats up their ch his wife and abuses physically the children establishes a pattern a father who has wrath and anger and blows his top every so often and raises his voice establishes a pattern and a blueprint of anger a father who uses substances to sustain himself alcohol cocaine drugs marijuana establishes a pattern in the children's mind so how do you know the patterns that were established in your life that's very simple look at your life cycle are you lazy are you angry are you adulterous? 